Now we know that today is a new moon in tropical Taurus, uh, as well as actually sidereal Taurus, because uh, I mean sidereal Aries and Taurus, because it's in Kritika Nakshatra. So uh, it's a very, very interesting lunation. It has uh, the sun and the moon conjunct Black Moon Lilith. And uh, they are together, Black Moon Lilith. And interestingly, they are conjunct the fixed star Algol at about 26 of tropical Taurus. Now, uh, is this so many synchronicities here with Black Moon Lilith being pre present in this particular part of the zodiac, ready to uh, be conjunct with alcohol, I am reminded of how the Jews actually con connect uh, Black Moon Lilith to alcohol. I will tell you all about that and a lot more about this big star. Now, this is a definitely not an easy fixed star. It is known as the most evil star in the heavens, okay? Many, many astrologers, uh, many, many, um, you know, like even Cornelius Agrippus has something good to say about this star. But Robson is very clear that uh, Algol is an extremely malevolent star. And there is an association to decapitation because it is a celebration of Perseus. Uh, it is, hi Vala, it is a celebration of Perseus severing the head of Medusa. All right, so we are going to go, uh, you know, uh, step by step in understanding how this lunation plays out. Now, the thing with um, Lilith being prominent in this lunation and Black Moon Lilith being compared to alcohol. So we can understand that this energy is about repressed feminine energy, whether it be it sensual, whether it be it, you know, the expression of feminine uh, energy and its suppression by patriarchal society. So uh, during a lunation that is conjunct or opposite alcohol, so whenever you look at a fixed star, you not only look at the conjunction, you look at the opposition. So this is about 26 degrees of Scorpio. Okay, so when you see uh, how alcohol plays out um, in the lives of its natives, it's quite interesting because um, Sri Ramakrishna Paramhamsa was also alcohol uh, heavy. I am forgetting at the top of you know, the top of my head. I don't remember uh, his sinistry. I read ages ago an article about uh, Sri Ramakrishna's association with alcohol. So you see how Ramakrishna succeeded in decapitation of his head. How? By decapitating his ego and surrendering to the mother matrix that he called Kali Otara. Okay, so now alcohol is essentially about excavating unconscious, repressed energies. Okay, now with a star as compared to Lilith, we understand that this is a call for liberation, for feminine liberation. Now, when we speak of the feminine, we do not only mean women in the world, okay? Because even men or the, uh, the masculine has a part of him that is feminine. So it's, it's very interesting to see how this plays out. We often tend to think of masculine as male, feminine as female. And we don't understand that uh, within the masculine, within the feminine, there are uh, there is the other polarity. Okay. So when we speak of alcohol and the severance of the head, we oftentimes speak of severance of the ego. Now, what is the myth? The myth is that Medusa was a beautiful maiden, beautiful maiden. And Neptune saw her and he sort of uh, carried her into the temple where he raped her, okay? And, and this act uh, really angered Athena who uh, put a curse on Medusa that she turns into this monstrous, hideous uh, creature with snakes all over her head. Now, the association of snakes and kundalini energy is something I have mentioned many a times. And Lilith also is, is half woman and half 
serpent. So the awakening of the Kundalini, which is why, uh, you know, the, the anecdote of Lilith and the anecdote of Medusa, the difference is that both were rejected, both were vilified, but Lilith actually survived, whereas Medusa did not. Medusa did not receive her atonement in that sense, okay? And uh, because she was raped by uh, Neptune, Neptune is the god of the seas. So immediately you see the association of alcohol with the drowning and of course the decapitation of the head uh, where we see you know, Medusa's own head being decapitated right so again we see this this very interesting decapitation of the head um, motif um, percolate through it reminds me of the mahavidya of the vidya chinnamasta chinnamasta is also one of the dasha mahavidyas and uh, chinnamasta has a severed head and from her severed head she feeds her uh, uh, body and the two attendants, Jaya and Vijaya. So there's been a lot of, you know, um, introspection and debate and, uh, you know, uh, ideas about Chinnamasta. I have explained in, a, in many videos about Chinnamasta and the decapitation of the head actually uh, signifies, again, decapitation of the ego, right? So now, uh, when you have such a powerful new moon, conjunct algol and uh, of course black moon lilith then we have something very very interesting uh, popping up and this is of course the exaltation of the moon because moon is exalted in kritika nakshatra where we have the lunation now it's a call to excavate unconscious repressed material okay lilith is fantasy rejection denial all right, Lilith is uh, the, the part of the feminine that has been rejected, maybe because of her strength and maybe because of her um, demand that she will not be subservient to Adam and you cannot use her thus. So th there's a very interesting motif at play and I see women today uh, sort of, you know, being very powerful and not taking shit, so to say, right? Not taking shit and just laying down their rules and saying, this is how I see it and this is this is how I want it. Now, Lilith makes, and also men, the feminine part within them calls for recognition, you know? If you do not wed the male-female inside, then you do not experience the alchemical marriage or hieros gamos. So this is very interesting. Today's lunation, a lunation conjunct, the fixed star alcohol, is a call for personal liberation. A call for personal liberation. We want to free ourselves, okay? And, and this body is literally uh, a jail for the soul. So even the severance of the head oftentimes signifies freedom. And we see that yeah, exoteric astrologers have linked alcohol to such incidents, extreme accidents, you know, misfortune, um, sacrificing the ego, violent death and all of that, okay? And sacrificing the ego is not easy because he set up this, all these personality traits and all of this understanding of who you are. And then ultimately you have to surrender all of that. And how does that happen? That is not an easy process, right? I mean, even if you don't understand the esoteric sciences, you understand that that is not easy because you spend years, years developing that ego. So in 3D, there has to be the correct balance without which we cannot function, the correct balance, okay? Now, alcohol is, uh, as I said, called pure evil, or star of misfortune, okay? Serial killers, murderers, um, violent dictators have all been associated to alcohol. And I told you Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa also has this very surreal connection to alcohol. Now, uh, 
when you look at uh, the the readings of Robson or of uh, Bernard Brady, you see that this star has been linked to death and suffering. Death and suffering. For people who have their ascendant conjunct alcohol, you will know exactly what I speak of. Okay, you'll know exactly how uh, you have experienced misfortunate, unfortunate, you have experienced misfortune by unfortunate incidents in your life. And oftentimes you do have to surrender that ego. You do have to surrender what you hold dear to reach a greater truth. That is alcohol, the star of extreme transformation, which is why I linked this fixed star to Chinnamasta. Chinnamasta is the, the sound and light wedded together. Complete transformation. So when the upper triad breaks into the lower triad, there's, you know, an art severance by which the material world is manifested. So it's not an easy process says it's it's painful so we see how alcohol is associated to painful experiences that oftentimes we humans cannot avoid pain pleasure are two sides of the same coin like death and life polarities dualities okay now uh, interestingly there's a word called algology algology Alcohol plus logy, okay, algology. So this means, this actually, uh, it means the study of pain. So I cannot stress enough how this fixed star directly links one to some kind of primordial feminine pain. Okay, primordial feminine pain. And whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, you have that inside of you. Okay, because we are all actually one. The polarities don't truly exist. Okay, the high upper dimensions, there are no uh, distinctions of male, female. You know, to say everything like our Dhanari So, uh, so algology is the study of pain. Interesting, right? Now, ultimate star of transformation. If you want change, okay, this is where you to do to see how alcohol is placed in your chart and not a sort of a change which is easy breezy but a change that is painful that that could be extremely unfortunate but it is a pain we have to uh, face nevertheless it's a pain we cannot avoid it's primordial Okay, now when you, you see Robson's uh, writings, you see if alcohol is conjunct the sun, you have violent death and extreme sickness. Okay, so sickness is again a motif that you see that plays out with alcohol. Okay, now the Hebrews, which I've already explained, link alcohol to Lilith. Right, and Lilith is conjunct this lunation today. So there's no way that I could come here and not talk about alcohol. Now, the Hebrews called alcohol Rosh Ha Shatan or Saturn, right? And they link it to the devil's head and uh, also to Lilith. So, Rosh Ha Shatan. Okay, I, I know in Arabic it's Shatan, but I don't know the Hebrew pronunciation. So, it's, uh, I don't know, Satan, okay, the pronunciation of Satan. So, they literally link it to Satan's decapitated head and to Lilith, the primordial feminine who refused to be subjugated by patriarchy. Now, the Arabs called Algol Al-Ghul. Al-Ghul, okay, that means mischief maker. So, if you have any planets conjunct Algol or opposite Algol, you will see how this mischief maker is, is you know, literally doling out mischief in your life. Hi, welcome, please. Now, as I mentioned a little while ago, that since alcohol connects to Lilith and connects to Medusa and Medusa's severed head, we see how both these uh, feminine archetypes have suffered sexual oppression. You know, it was Neptune who raped uh, Medusa because she was so, so beautiful. 
again with this motif we see that beauty becomes a curse right and we see how you know i was watching these videos on youtube years ago and i came across something called the magdalene laundry laundries so uh, if a woman or a girl not a woman if a girl was considered too beautiful too intelligent not easy to you know subjugate she was sent to this magdalene laundry where she, or she, if she got pregnant god save her you know and these were catholic institutions and these women who were too beautiful or too wild or untamable uncontrollable were sent to these laundries and made to work as slave labor so again we see how beauty and i spoke about the curse of venus the other day it's interesting to see how the curse of venus plays out and i mean beauty is something we treasure we want beauty we want to look beautiful right but in some situations beauty can be the greatest understood she had to you know she was made into a uh, some sort of a hideous monster and then perseus decapitates her head and uses it as a shield so all of that beauty was for nothing in fact that beauty destroyed her so both lilith and medusa have faced sexual oppression in the hands of patriarchy for being too bold for being too beautiful right lilith escaped medusa did not okay in a sense we vilify lilith and especially abrahamic religions and people who have a lesser understanding of the primordial dark goddess uh you know there's just something about patriarchy and its inherent fear of the dark goddess and menstruation and viparit methon like woman on top Adam's not going to accept that. No, I don't want woman on top. Why not? You may have a better orgasm, but he would not go for that. And then Eve was created. So, uh, you know, Algol, if if it's a woman and if she's got, um, I mean, in fact, another interesting story was Princess Diana. If I am not mistaken, Princess Diana and Prince William both have. Um, Oh wow! Okay, uh, it, it, Diana. If you know about Diana and uh, Prince William, both have Venus conjunct Algol, and we know how oppressive Diana's marriage was. You know, if you see that BBC interview, it's still available on YouTube of how she suffered, how she was just used as a as a womb, as a breeding um, animal. You know. because of her looks and her you know tall beautiful blonde those high cheekbones and that uh, scandinavian goddess look they picked her up and actually wedded her to this uh, prince charles who was never in love with her who was always in love with that camilla and what did uh, diana say that my marriage was a little bit too crowded it had three people in it So uh, we see how at the end of it she found Dodi Alfayad, then then you know she was um, in Paris and she was possibly pregnant with Dodi Alfayad's child, and then she crashed um, and possibly she was taken out, and yet she was the 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 princess of the people. So this Venus conjunct Algol brings a crazy kind of energy, and if I'm not mistaken, Prince William. has his venus conjunct alcohol like his mother and then you know bam all is not fine with him and uh, that kate kate milton all is not fine i mean in fact kate milton was pretty much chosen for him whereas harry went out and married the american uh, hollywood star who's a divorcee and look what happened to him So this alcohol connection is very interesting, and how it plays out today on this dark new moon in uh, tropical Taurus. We can only think of, and as the moon and the sun and the moon go closer and closer to alcohol, they're about four degrees apart. 
but they're close enough to feel this powerful decapitation of the head. And not to mention Black Moon Lilith is jump the sun and the moon so this is very interesting right uh there is something about uh alcohol that speaks of primordial womanhood okay we women are not meant to be uh perfect for instance that video on curse of venus he saw women you know, prostitutes on the streets who are unrefined and not sophisticated. And he got, he was put off by women. He said, oh my God, I don't want a woman. I want to sculpt the perfect sculptor and fall in love with her. So the woman has to now not only be perfect at all times, but she must now compete with a mute uh, porcelain or marble sculptor. You know, a woman is not perfect, just like a man is not perfect, we're humans, you know. Sometimes the, the eyeshadow is not right, sometimes they always don't come perfect, sometimes they come perfect, sometimes the dress gets ripped. So it's all a part of the human experience. But patriarchy has given uh, women this impossible task of looking perfect at all times yet if you're too beautiful you will get your head decapitated if you are uncontrollable you will get your uh, maybe not decapitated but you will be called a witch a bitch uh, a baby eater a demoness and whatnot you'll be normal you'll be ordinary yeah go get your manicure go get your clothes go look nice but not too nice this is what patriarchy tells us is the curse of Venus. I mean, hopefully things will change. I am absolutely certain it will. But now we realize that a woman can't be too beautiful. A woman can't be too smart. Uh, a woman can't be too anything. If she has, um, if a man is, um, you know, outspoken, he's confident. But if a woman is outspoken, she's a shrew. And what you do with the shoe, you tame the shoe, right? So this is the sort of um, patriarchal jargon that we are used to, right? Maybe on this new moon, it is time to understand the primordial feminine does not need to be perfect. She is all beautiful, all powerful. She does not need to be subjugated. She does not need to be controlled. She needs to be set free because she's shakti like kali is a top of shiva that is viparit method that is what adam did not accept he did not accept viparit method and he had to give birth to eve eve was subservient oh not too beautiful not too shrewish not too intelligent just right and dumb and sweet and malleable and controllable we don't want women to be uncontrollable, do we? No. We need them to have babies so we can hold property. We need them to be good mothers, good wives. We need them to make food. We need them to raise the kids. You know, why do we need women to be too brilliant? We don't need that. But today, Lilith says, enough is enough. Decapitate that shit. <laughs> right? And maybe grow a new head, right? Chinnabasta has severed her own head and she feeds her own body and her two attendants. She is the mother, just like Lilith. You know, um, who knows what would have happened if Adam has accepted like Shiva, the Viparit method of Lilith, right? Who knows what society would be like today? Although this is Kali Yuga. You know that, right? So Al Ghul, the mischief maker, Al Ghul, the most evil star in the sky that deals with primordial womanhood, right? We don't want to deal with primordial womanhood. So it's a mischief maker, it's a weeping star, star of sorrow, God knows what have you. So today's mantra is whom? With Al Ghul, if you have Al Ghul, then I suggest that the Vidya you work with is Chinnamasta. Chinnamasta will 
tell you what you need to know about severance of the ego to truly develop yourself to truly be who you want to be you know if you don't want to look pretty you don't need to look pretty even if society wants you to you be who you are and that is the authentic freedom that lilith is providing she's saying be who you are be who you want to be right nobody makes a decision but you take charge now now the interesting thing is that ptolemy says that perseus when we have alcohol is of the nature of jupiter and saturn right so we see jupiter jupiter mahavidya tara saturn mahavidya kali so we see both this these energies of jupiter and saturn coming through perseus okay the tarot is the hanged man now you know the hanged man is actually a yogic posture okay the hanged man is actually an a yogic posture so it's it's beautiful i wish i had my tarot cards with me but i just read for a client and then got ready uh, and, and messed up my makeup and just decided to come however it is because i really don't have much time so i've got many things to do right now many videos to make so the hanged man if you don't know the tarot check it out because today you need to look at things from a different perspective to change the point of view to recognize lilith to not suppress the lilith inside so she's a witch she's a bitch she's to be ignored she's to be suppressed she's to be controlled she's to be vilified she's to be thrown out no she needs integration she needs integration today is a call for lilith integration now uh, if you have alcohol with fortuna or its dispositor you have poverty with the moon you have extreme uh, sickness and violent death so we have the moon almost conjunct alcohol the moon is in kritika nakshatra the moon is conjunct alcohol today i will be making the nakshatra series with kritika i will begin with kritika nakshatra so stay on now a uh, very interesting jean paul sartre is one of my favorite french philosophers there was a time in my life when i would not live without three uh, men and they were kafka kamu and sartre so a uh, sartre has jupiter conjunct algol and what does he say hell is other people yet if you if you think he's a, a misanthrope you're wrong you're absolutely mistaken he's not a misanthrope but he understands that the way society is functioning is is detrimental to the growth of the soul right so this is a star connected to immense female power and freedom so remember that it is not a star to be trifled with it is uh, even when we make talismans under our gold then these are not talismans to mess around with okay however alcohol in 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 this particular fixed star you can control people or do black magic now listen to what agrippa says okay cornelius agrippa says that under the head of alcohol they made an image whose figure was the head of a man with a bloody neck they re, uh, they report that it bestows good success to petitions and make it him who carrieth it bold and magnanimous and preserve it the members of the body sound also it helpeth against witchcraft and reflecteth evil endeavors and wicked incantations upon our adversary so if someone's trying to do any kind of you know black magic on you or any kind of voodoo who do anything on you uh carrying at uh, this particular image of a decapitated um, figure of a man and then of course you need the suffumigation diamond is the stone of alcohol by the way and uh, herbs mugwort so you need to suffumigate it with mugwort and if you're making a talisman and you've got to make it with diamond right i'm not going to get, get too much into the talismanic properties because i'm going to end the video here it's already a 30 minute video 
uh, today as we have the, uh, the new moon in the sign of tropical Taurus uh, at about 22 degrees and we have alcohol at about 26 degrees. So if you are an alcohol native, for instance, you have that ascendant bang on alcohol, 26 degrees of Taurus, please write to me and tell me how life has been. If you have that Venus in alcohol, tell me how life is, how your love life has been. If you have something in Scorpio, 26 of Scorpio, please tell me how this alcohol opposition has affected you. Because, you know, when you have a conjunction, it's almost an easier, you know, although conjunctions are not always easy. You've got to see the energies of the planets. Are they friends? Are they enemies? Where, where are they? Okay. Thank you. So what you need to do is you need to see if you have anything at 26 degrees of Scorpio, 26 degrees of Taurus. Scorpio will be more troubled because you have this opposition. So there's this need to, uh, you know, look at two points of view, the two polarities, and then to come to a midpoint, to assimilate, integrate. So it's not easy. 26 degrees of um, Scorpio, any placements, especially that moon or that uh, Venus, because, you know, these planets don't do well in Scorpio. Now, the 26 degrees of Scorpio happens to be Decan 3 of Scorpio, right? So, the first Decan of Scorpio is Scorpio triplicity ruled by Mars. Second Decan of Scorpio is Pisces triplicity ruled by Jupiter. Third Decan of Scorpio is Cancer triplicity ruled by that moon. However, you must understand the Taurus being the exaltation of the moon. The moon in Scorpio is like, you know too much emotions and not enough expression, not enough acknowledgement of emotions. When emotions are somehow just side sidetracked or you, know, you don't want to think about emotions because they're painful, right? So um, in fact, all Leo Aquarius also are square alcohol. So I have my Mercury at about 24 degrees of tropical Leo. So literally my Mercury is square that alcohol and that Mercury in my tropical chart is the ruler of my rising and ruler of my 10th house and that Mercury is conjunct that Saturn. <laughs> so that this, it's, it's really interesting. These squares also play out with fixed star connections, but I would say look more for conjunctions and oppositions. Now, next video coming up is, um, I begin my nakshatra series today, but I'm not beginning with the first nakshatra. No, I'm going to leave that, uh, I don't know, in a day or two. I've got 108 nakshatras, right? And then after that, if the nakshatra series does well, uh, then I will be doing the pada breakups. Okay, you know, each nakshatra has a breakup of four padas, and each pada wants artha, dharma, um, artha, kama, dharma, moksha. So, understanding the padas is completely, you know, another video because I don't want to complicate too many of my students who've just begun studying Vedic astrology and they are really interested in um, the nakshatras. So coming up right now, my video on nakshatra, uh, Kritika nakshatra, where we have the lunation today. And uh, thank you for watching the video on alcohol. Stay tuned for more astrology and esoteric knowledge coming your way. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and don't forget to book your reading. Bye-bye. Take care.